Hello and good morning. I um, wanted to create a video to discuss traffic stops as a uh, recent question in uh, one of my classes, the uh, 202 Principles and Procedures class. A student asked me about uh, when police officers can run warrants checks and uh, you know if they decide to run a warrants check just for fun, can they pull over a car, uh, you know, arrest the driver, etc. So I wanted to uh, create this video to discuss in California some of the circumstances where officers can make a traffic stop and uh, what type of action they will decide to do after making that stop so um, let's go from the beginning uh, when I was a police officer and uh, I was on patrol I remember one morning um, I you know we had briefing at the station I um, you know went out to my patrol car checked everything out when went on patrol and as I was driving up one of the roads uh, in northern part of my city, um, a, uh, a person on the other side of the road, uh, as he drove by me, he gave me that you know panic look. And um, so I made a U-turn. Um, at the time, I was driving an unmarked car. Uh, I was working for the tactical patrol unit and uh, made a U-turn. Um, as soon as the driver saw me make the U-turn, he pulls into the uh, shopping center and he gets on the McDonald's drive through So I went ahead and um, came up into the shopping center and ran a registration check on the license plate for the car. And uh, the car the dispatch came back with a person's name who owned the car. We'll just call him John Doe. And so once I obtained the name, um, I ran a registration or a warrant check on John Doe, made him to be about 35, 38 years of age. And uh, it came back that he had a $70,000 warrant for sales and possession of methamphetamine, confirmed warrant. And so um, when he uh, was in the drive through I pulled up uh, you know, a little bit next to him. Um, there were other people there. And I said, are you, you know, John Doe? And uh, he replied, yes. I said, well, then go ahead and pull over as soon as you're done getting your food. So he pulls over, and um, uh, it was interesting. I remember this very well because he uh, begins to tell me of how he's, uh, you know, a religious man, um, has completely changed his life around, and uh, you know, no longer does drugs, and he's uh, very thankful that I pulled him over, but that his life is on the right track. Anyway, um, I told him he had a warrant, and uh, uh, I decided not to tow his car, and I arrested him and uh, drove him to the station or to the jail. And uh, before going into the jail, I remember asking him um, if he had any narcotics on him because it was a felony to go into the, uh, uh, take drugs into the jail. It was an additional felony, a separate charge. And so um, he told me, no, you know, officer, I'm uh, completely clean. I've never, um, you know, I don't do drugs anymore. I've dedicated my life to the Lord and, uh, you know, I'm completely clean. So when we get to the, we would go in at Sally Port, uh, where we searched the prisoners, you know, I uh, went ahead and told him to take out his cowboy boots, and, uh, you know, he's asking me, is this really necessary? I'm like, yeah. And uh, we're doing the search, pat down, and when he pulls out the cowboy boots, uh, and what comes out of the boots? Uh, a couple of baggies of methamphetamine. And uh, so that's a felony. That's a felony charge. Uh, little white baggies, uh, baggies containing white powder substance, which I knew from having worked as a police officer for years and uh, being a certified drug expert that that was methamphetamine. And so uh, I just shook my head and I said, "What is this?" And he's like, "Oh, I, you know, I'm sorry. I didn't know those were in there. You know, uh, type of thing." So uh, I went ahead and, and uh, handcuffed him right away. Um, when somebody lies to you. You know that they have the potential to harm you, um, the potential that they also have other drugs on their person. So I went ahead and uh, handcuffed him, took him upstairs to the control part of the jail. And once we got up there, um, the, uh, um, the jailers, uh, uh, you know, I told them, hey, I want to do a strip search on this guy. And, uh, and, you know, the prisoner became all, you know, irate. You know, why are you strip searching me? I only had that little baggy on my boots and I said well it's because you you lied to me and uh, I asked you if you had it's any seven drugs hours. I asked if you had any drugs and you told me you did not have any drugs before we came into the jail and you lied to me and now I'm going to do a strip search and so he you know rolls his eyes gets all upset and he uh, sticks his hand down his crotch 
and pulls out an eight ball, uh, you know, of drugs. I mean, it's, uh, I, you know, both the jailer and I were like, what in the world? And the jailer was upset at me because how did I miss that? But uh, I explained to him later on that it wasn't that I missed it. It was the second that the uh, subject took the uh, boots off and the drugs came off, I knew that he was hiding other things. So he was a potential risk to me, to my safety. So I went ahead and handcuffed him right away and then brought him up to control center where there would be other jailers to help me. So we uh, went ahead and um, took him into a padded room. Uh, we took all of his clothes off. And, um, you know, when we took his clothes off, when he spread, uh, you know, his butt cheeks, uh, he also had um, drugs there, you know. And so uh, he went to jail for a lot of charges, uh, not just the uh, warrant for methamphetamine, but also um, the fact that he had brought drugs into the jail and it was enough to charge him again with possession for sale. So let's go back to the original um, uh, topic that we were discussing, which was traffic stops and warrants checks. And the student uh, sent me the, this question, was asking me, can officers run license plates uh, just for fun? And we don't use the, uh, the uh, just for fun um, explanation. We say that California law currently allows police officers to run registration checks um, on any vehicle that's on a public highway driving around to confirm the uh, registration status for that vehicle. And so this is where your learning begins. I mean, I know you were interested in my earlier story and that was a fun story. I enjoyed telling it in class, but uh, this is where the learning begins. So um, if an officer decides to run a registration check on a car in California and uh, the, the owner comes back, as it was in my case, that uh, he had a possible warrant, that is enough probable cause to pull the car over um, and contact the driver. And so let's look at a couple of different scenarios. Number one, um, the driver's not present in the car. Let's just say that it's somebody else driving. So you tell him the reason why you stopped the, the car, you tell the driver, and he or she says, hey, I'm not the driver. And you say, okay, well, this is why I stopped the car, so go ahead and show me your license, registration, proof of insurance. And then the officer can go from there. If they have a license, if they don't have insurance, if they don't have valid registration in the car, he can go ahead and issue him a ticket for that. Fix a ticket on some things, not a fix a ticket on other things. Now, let's just say that the, um, that the officer does pull over uh, the car and it's the registered owner, the one that has the possible warrant for his or her arrest. And so what the officer would do is then uh, would get, you know, license, registration, proof of insurance, as he would do with any other traffic stop and then run a uh, warrants check on the, the driver again to confirm the validity of the warrant. It's important for you to know if you're planning on getting into law enforcement that sometimes warrants uh, have been recalled or the court personnel forgot to take them off the system. And so just because you call dispatch and you run a check through CLETS, and I'll explain to you in a minute what CLETS stand for, and it comes back that he has a warrant, when you contact that person, you still have to have dispatch confirm the warrant. What that confirmation process is, is that dispatcher will contact the court jurisdiction for the warrant, talk to an actual person who will pull the actual physical warrant, uh, whether it's on the computer, via digital format, or in paper form, to confirm that the warrant is valid. Sometimes warrant ex warrants expire, and I mentioned, as I mentioned earlier, sometimes they're pulled off the system and they don't longer exist. So you can't just go out there and make a rest uh, without confirming the warrant. So let's go back to the scenario where the officer pulls the car over, uh, the person that's the driver is the registered owner and has a potential warrant for his arrest. You confirm the warrant to be valid. So now uh, the officer has some discretion depending on what the warrant is for. In my case, uh, the uh, warrant was for a felony, possession of methamphetamine for sales which uh, was not a citable offense at that time. It was basically, I had to take the person to jail and book him. Now, sometimes uh, they're for minor traffic uh, infractions. And if that's the case, the officer has discretion to uh, go ahead and issue a citation, a notice to appear to the driver for that warrant. You include all the information in the ticket. You have them sign the warrant, promising to appear in court at the date and time indicated. And then you can release them. Uh, so that's using discretion. Or 
you can go ahead and do what I did on my earlier case, and that was book the person into jail uh, for the warrant. So it's completely up to the officer. It's also important for you to know that laws changed some years back on the booking uh, fees. Now, every time a police officer, deputy sheriff, California High Patrol, state officer, Department of Justice, agent, etc., books someone into the county jail, their agency gets billed for that booking. So um, agencies actually discourage officers to book people uh, if they have discretion and they can just go ahead and issue a citation uh, to release the person and have the person go to court later on for that warrant based on the citation. Now, I will caution you, you cannot, once you contact someone and you confirm they have a valid warrant, you can't simply just let them walk away. Uh, you as a peace officer can be charged with a crime for not taking action on that warrant, uh, which is valid. It's an order from a judge ordering you to arrest the person and bring him to the courts for processing. So, uh, you know, I know some of you watching this video, you get into law enforcement, you get a little bit lax, you get uh, lazy, and you decide not to book the person. That's no longer a choice. Um, you have to do something. If you don't decide to book the person, you're going to give them a ticket, release them on a citation, notice to appear, promise to appear in court, and so you've met your obligations. The worst thing you can do is do nothing and then later on be disciplined for not taking action. So um, back to the other scenarios. So then um, I mentioned to you earlier in this video about CLETS. CLETS stands for California Law Enforcement Telecommunication System. CLETS is the, uh, the primary source for information for California peace officers. We are also linked with other states. So when we run a check on a person, in most circumstances, they're linked, you know, the check will check other states to see if they're wanted in other jurisdictions. And so it depends on the department you're working with. They may have police uh, computers in the police cars, um, you know, and, and those allow you to run the checks directly from your car computer. If not, you can uh, call dispatch. And so before I close this video, I'll tell you one more thing. Um, I talk in my classes uh, during my discussions about officer safety and so um, we, if you decide to be one of those, I say we, we peace officers, we decide to become police officers, we go out there to enforce the law, um, but we don't go out there to get killed. Uh, I mean there is a risk that we take, uh, it's not just being a peace officer, it's driving a car on the highway, but we want to minimize risks. Why am I mentioning this to you? Because I was a training officer for years. And um, I always taught my trainees to watch people's hands. I said, you know, don't take your eyes off people's hands. Uh, we think gun, guns kill people, but no, actually hands on guns kill people. So if you maintain a, a constant observation of people's hands, you'll be fine. Nothing will happen to you. And so uh, if you make a traffic stop, um, traffic stops are inherently dangerous. And so you're getting out of the car, you're maintaining a, a visual observation on the driver, the passengers, and their hands constantly. You don't take your eyes off their hands. And so um, if you're going to run a warrants check, I mentioned earlier that you can go run it on a computer. Now, if you're by yourself, I don't advise you to take your eyes off the suspects and go on the computer. I recommend that you call it into dispatch. You have dispatchers. They uh, don't have the same threat level that you have on the street. So uh, run your warrants check through dispatch. Um, before you pat somebody down on a traffic stop, call for a backup officer. Don't do a vehicle search by yourself. Don't turn your back on suspects. Don't lose sight of the suspect's hands. I assure you, uh, you know, I made it through many years in law enforcement and I safely came out of it. Uh, without being severely injured. Uh, but the times that I did get into a scuffle or that something happened, it was, uh, it was because I failed to look at the suspect's hands. I failed to ignore the signs. And so I want you to know the law, but I also want you to be aware of small um, daily practices that you do as a peace officer that will keep you alive and bring you back home safely to your family and loved ones. So this concludes the video. Uh, as with any videos that I do, uh, please shoot me an email or comments. Um, I'd like to hear your feedback. Uh, maybe you have another question for me. When can officers do this? When can officers do that? This video just simply summarizes uh, the fact, uh, the question that was asked by a student. 
can officers run license plates without uh, 